Hi folks. Uh, so today I have a uh, another small format uh, interchangeable core here. Uh, this one, if you look at the front, says sergeant on it, uh, which is a little bit unusual. Most people don't really think of sergeant uh, when they think of small format uh, interchangeable cores, or really interchangeable cores more generally. Um, and, you know, uh, sergeant does make just really plain work-alike uh, interchangeable cores, but uh, the thing that makes this interesting is if we turn to this side, we can see this odd little cutout on the side with something in it, and that is because this is actually a Sergeant XC uh, core, and so XC is Sergeant's attempt so, uh, first of all, if you know your in, uh, small format interchangeable core keyways, uh, you'll see this is a little bit unusual. You can't quite place it. That's because this is uh, Sergeant 4A. Uh, Sergeant has its own proprietary small format uh, keyway. Um, and actually, it's got 4A and 4B. 4B is their restricted version, which you need a special letter of authorization uh, for, and that is only available from the factory. 4A is their uh, proprietary but open keyway, and it's been around long enough that at this point, uh, aftermarket blank manufacturers are starting to make copies of it. And so uh, XC is Sargent's attempt to prolong uh, their key control. Uh, systems. Uh, and basically what that is, is just like uh, Schlage Everest or um, uh, Best Cormax, which I've shown you, and uh, all of those other things, it's instead of coming up with an entirely new keyway profile, uh, they are adding a secondary locking element, which gives them patent protection on new blanks. Uh, that work with these keys. It's not really high security. It's not really, um, it doesn't severely impact uh, drill resistance or uh, pick resistance or any of that. What it does do though is it makes it much more difficult for someone to make a, an illicit or unauthorized copy of the key for one of these cores. And basically, just like um, just like uh, Schlage Everest, this little extra locking element is this spring-loaded uh, catch. Essentially, it's just a, a different type of check pin. Uh, what's really unique about it is that this is not actually a single piece that's directly driven by the key. This is a... Uh, a pin or a lug or a catch, whatever you want to call it, that is then attached to a, a sort of a seesaw style lever, which runs along the length of the plug back to here, where there is then a uh, spring-loaded pin that drops into the keyway. So if we turn it to the side here, you can just about make it out there, that little thing hanging down right there in the keyway. See if we can get good background coloring for it. And just see that sticking out, that little bit of brass there. If I remember where I put my flashlight, there it is. Let's see. Yeah, hopefully there you can make that out uh, right near the middle of the keyway. Uh, that is the special uh, profile check pin, essentially. And uh, let's take a look at the key. From this side, uh, obviously the blade does not look like anything special. Uh, Sergeant XC, at least in small format cores, uses uh, standard uh, A2 or A4, and technically you can use A3 pinning with it, just everyone hates A3. Um, and for good reason, it's kind of terrible. Um, but really the only special stuff that you see on this side of the 
blank is that it has the sergeant bow and it says sergeant XC on it. That's the only special stuff here. But if we flip it over, uh, this is the control key, as you can see. Um, it has this large rectangular cutout here and this little sort of ramp cut into the tip of the key. And those two elements are enough to give this blank uh, is brand, uh, an entirely new uh, utility patent protection because those are essential to the mechanical function of the lock and the key. So when we put that key in, as you can see nothing happens, nothing happens. But as we get to the very end, now it pulls that uh, lug down and the plug is able to rotate. Another thing about this is because of that lever system, uh, you can see there's these two holes in the back. That's where the, uh, that's standard on any uh, small format core. Um, I don't have any spares here, but uh, basically usually in a small format interchangeable core housing, there are sort of these two prongs that stick out and those are supposed to go into those two holes. But because that uh, lever and that secondary locking element is right here in the lock, you can't have that hole go all the way through. Uh, so you can see, you know, two very different depths there. And so in order to use this, you actually have to trim down the uh, one of those two prongs on the tailpiece. And so uh, because I'm going to fit this into my uh, Abbas 83IC body, uh, I have just trimmed down one of those two prongs. Um, Sargent actually makes a special, what they call a shearing tool, uh, for preparing uh, SFIC housings to trim down uh, that prong. Uh, I am just going to, I just uh, did that with a uh, pair of diagonal cutters and uh, file. But uh, we are going to drop this thing in. There we go. And first thing, we are going to try to pick this. And then I've got my dumping block. And if the construction workers will cooperate with me uh, for once, we will uh, also gut this. So we're going to start off. This is a fairly wide straight keyway up here. Um, but it's not quite wide enough to fit the uh, full-size uh, Peterson pry bar, so we're going to go with the 40 thousandths version, the pry bar light. We're going to get that set up there, and we're going to uh, use a standard thickness uh, Peterson hook. So pin 1, binding a little bit, pin 2, binding a bit more, get a click out of that. Try pin one again because it didn't give us a click. Nope, nothing. Uh, three is binding. Four is binding. Five, very stiff. Six. And seven. Okay, with that last click, we're getting a pretty good false set here. Let's check those pins. Now we're going to run the uh, hook in at a little bit of an angle and find that check pin. And try to get under that. And there we go. We have that to control now. And we are going to just pull that core out. So there we go. Uh, yeah. So now we are going to try to gut this. So here we have uh, my ejector block. You can see it's empty. Just drop that in. Close it up. Got our ejector tool and hammer.
that out. everything there and so now there are all the pins you can see pretty much all standard uh, best pins just uh, nickel silver on the bottom and brass uh, nickel silver key pins and brass uh, driver and build-up pins uh, no mastering on this cylinder. But now, let's see if we can get this uh, C clip off. Just, there we go. We'll push on the ends and that slides off. And. Oh, yeah. There we go. So we insert the blank. Faceplate drops off. That's pretty common. So you can see there is the sleeve and the body still together. But the plug is what we're really interested in. So here at the back, you can see uh, that the check pin that actually projects into the keyway. The linking lever runs through these holes. Looks like there's probably a little spring at the bottom of this hole to get that lever to uh, push back and bias itself so that this will always project into the keyway and this will stick out into the plug. And there is the second locking lug that projects into the body and sleeve. And then that little metal pin in there uh, is what uh, acts as a pivot. So there, if we take the key out, that uh, locking lug sticks out, and the pin and the uh, check pin goes back into the uh, keyway. And now, let's see if we can get Good background lighting. There we go, we got some sort of white stuff behind that. So you can see as I push in on that locking lug, the profile check pin actually in this case does not move because it's not directly linked. But You can see that actually the lever extends into the keyway there, and that is what that long rectangular cutout in the key is for. So just those two, just this very simple little lever mechanism being added uh, to the lock does actually provide additional, uh, and the extra milling on the key blank is what provides the extra patent protection and therefore copy protection uh, for this entire key system. But uh, aside from that extra element there, all you have to deal with are those seven pins and because it's using standard uh, best type pins, uh, you're rarely going to encounter spool pins of any kind in there. So uh, that's about it. Nice interesting little lock um, and a fun little challenge. So until next time, have fun and happy picking.